Hello everyone, my name is Alan, I'm from Soberlab and today I will explain how you can convert this to a NAS server. What's this? It's a laptop. It's, this one is only example. It's really old laptop and you should not use this one because it's made for Windows XP and uh, will not work well. But anyway, you can have an old laptop and you can use the USB ports plus the internal hard drive connection and you can make your NAS server. And this NAS server will work quite well and it's quite compact and quite simple. You don't need to have uh, anything extravagant to do. So, if you like this idea and want to know a little bit more about it, we're gonna show it. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's see how to do it. First thing we're gonna basic how to set up your computer and what you need to know. First thing you need to have a laptop because the idea is to make the laptop as a NAS, otherwise, how we can do a NAS without a laptop. This laptop already have a run memory, a hard drive, and a CPU and should be working. If it's not working the screen, fine, you can use the uh, HMI or any other connection to get a different display only for first time setup. And after this one, you don't need any more. But if you have a screen working, it's either better, don't need anything else. Also, you're gonna need a way to connect an external hard drive. I suggest you to get one of those. It's quite simple. You can get a hard drive. You can connect a hard drive here. These options, it's ones that you can connect a 12 volts one. It means that if you have a power supply, you can come here and connect 12 volts. And now it's working with a 3.5 inch hard drive. Or if you only want a 3.5, you can disconnect it and sort it. Uh, other thing that you're gonna need, if you're gonna need it to have more than one hard drive adapter, suppose that you have two, three, or I don't know how many hard drives you want to connect, you need it to have a splitter. Yes, exactly, it's a split. You have one connection for 12 and extra connections. This one's normally used for CCTV but to work really well. And also you need to have the power supply. The power supply is quite tricky, why? You need to have a good efficient power supply, most of them are, but you need to look for the current that you have. You need to calculate at least one amp for each hard drive. They say that's 0 0.7, 0 0.6, depending off model that you're gonna do. Some of those 0.8, but consider one amp minimum for your calculation. Otherwise, you're gonna have other current and that you can damage your hard drive. This one, in this case, it's five amp. I don't know if you guys can see. This five amp, it means that it can support up to, yes, five hard drives, good answer. These ones, you connect basically here and you connect all your USB adapters and then you connect to your laptop. Other thing that you can have, instead of use your hard drive, you can have a small flash drive connect to your computer so you can use your hard drive that's SATA connection specific for your NAS application and that's the USB with your OS and it will work quite well. As well, you're gonna need the main important thing is a RJ45 cable. I think that's RJ45, it's more stable. You can connect it to the Wi-Fi. Yes, you can, but it's not stable at all. And uh, if you are doing something that you lose the connection, make you upset, at least I will be. And this one, it's at least um, one gigabyte connection, so it's quite handy. And cost nothing, and you can put close for your home. Okay, at the moment you get the base. You need to have a laptop that's working. You can have all the hard drives, you decide which ones. I suggest you to get a NAS specific hard drive because it's more robust. Also need to think how you're gonna handle these hard drives. Okay, if you leave all the hard drives, one in the top of the other freely, first you can knock it and they will drop in the ground and you can lose your date. Also the vibration with one hard drive will affect the vibration of the other hard drive. So you need to have at least a case that will fit all the hard drives. Yes, you can find something, you can print something, you can have anything that you want. You can need to have all the hard drives shield between themselves in the way that the vibration of one will not affect the vibration of other as well in such a way that if you knock one it will be quite difficult to fall down the ground 
and it should be flat or this way or this way don't run in angle because then you're gonna deteriorate all the hard drive you need to be or this way or this way not this way if it makes sense what i'm talking okay we have all the hard drive set up so now we can start to think how we're gonna organize this pool in my case i like to do open media val you can have a true nas or others but the open media val it's a really light work either in an old raspberry pi in, in this case a laptop will work quite well if you go to true nas you need at least more cores and a better run memory and i doubt that you're going to invest a lot in run memory for an old laptop so why not open media val I will jump the installation of OpenMediaVal and I will jump the installation for creation of users and how to create your folders, blah, 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 because it's not the top for this video. I already showed one of my previous videos when I show how to install OpenMediaVal 6, the procedure to install OpenMediaVal 5, that is a stable option. It's exactly the same, but let's come here in OpenMediaVal. In OpenMediaVal, I already have my user created, CyberLab. I already have uh, my share folders created, so in this way i use the same setup that i did for merge and f i will get a little bit more about it but basically i have uh, three hard drives all the three hard drives that will simulate this situation i have two hard drives connected here and plus one internally it means three hard drives you don't need to be the same size of hard drive this is the good for merge and f you can have one hard drive internally for two terabytes and another one for four terabytes and another USB hard drive for three terabytes and you can have any size and that will work well. Don't do RAID, remember, don't do RAID, don't do RAID. Why? Because you can lose your data. Imagine that you have these two USBs connect and that you look in it, you start to run and you punch one of those. Okay, it's RAID, it will keep it working and that you touch another one and stop to work this shoe. What happened? The rate break. What's gonna do? You record right in this, and that you try to connect everything, and the rate is break. You try to recover the rate is characteristic with these two hard drives, and not work as well. What you should do? Cry because you shouldn't do it in the first place. Okay, look your backup. You didn't do backup. Okay, then the rate didn't work at all. You know because USB is not stable. Only SAT is more stable. So if you use SB, the chance to lose your data is really high. Don't joke with it because if you do your NAS, it's because you want to keep your data safe. Anyway, return here for the application. I have three hard drives. In this case, all the hard drives is the same size, but potentially you could have a different size. We're gonna have one share folder for the first hard drive, one share folder for the second hard drive, and the third hard drive with another share folder. I create a merge point where it will be the merge between these three hard drives. I create in the case of the first hard drive, but I could create in the second or the third, it doesn't matter. Only a, point, a, a mounting point for all the hard drives. Have this one in mind, now we're gonna start to configure our NAS. We're gonna open our PUT to do it. So now we're gonna start to configure our pool. How we're gonna do it? We're gonna install MergeFS. If you don't have installed it, let's install from zero. First thing, you're gonna update your system why you want to avoid the issue. So it's really simple, you only run uh, comments. I will put all this process, all the comments that I use in the link description. So if you want, you don't need to write and type it manually, you only can copy and paste, it's easy. sudo apt update for updated library and upgrade to upgrade our library, yes. It will take some seconds, they will download all the library, done. Now we're gonna install our mergefs. So we're gonna install sudo apt install merge fs and done. Next step, you need to install the fuse. I don't know if your system right have, if you have great, if not, let's install from again, it's not a problem. This fuse we're gonna use then all the time that the server or your laptop has started, they already start your merge fs running. So now we're gonna create our folder. It can be any name that you like, but because I'm installing merge fs, why not create the same way? I can create Amy K dear merger fs. Now enter this folder, I will put cd merge fs and wonderful, we are inside this folder. So now we can create our service. To create our service, we're gonna learn merge fs point service and we are in our service. Now we're gonna create our service. Already have a notepad with our setup. What we're gonna do? 
we have a description of this service that will be merge fast mode, can be any name that you want. What are we gonna wait? We're gonna wait that the network is online. Why? Because I like this idea. In the case of a local hard drive, it's not a fact, but you can avoid some issue if you wait. Normally, the network is still one of the things that's the last one, so why not? You have the network online, so now this type of service will be forking, and what kind of application? We're gonna run a merge FS, and now here we're gonna put our mounting point. To create our mounting point, we're gonna mount the first one, data one, we come back here, save, come here, paste two dots, and go for the point two, come here, paste two dots, and point three, paste, and space, now we're gonna make the end point, where you want to mount on this data. And we get the space and paste it. Now we get space again and we see which parameters that we are setting. The parameters will be RW, user info, allowed orders, function generator, full, and that's it. All the information is here what we want. We put as no empty because if uh, perhaps the file have some item there that was not deleted previously, and you try to mount again, they will not be able to mount and maybe you're gonna have problems. So we leave as a no empty. Should not have any file because they will not save anything, should be empty all the time. So have this one in mind, we come here and we have the fusion mount and the location. Which location that I want? I want to be exactly the same marriage. Kill mode, no, I don't want. And I restart on fail and that will be for multiple user targets. Have all this one set up and organized the way that you need. You copy this one, come back in our putty, and you paste this one. Have it paste this one, we're gonna go for Ctrl X, yes, and save. Now we have save our merge FS. Now we need to set up for the start of this one, to start with the fuse. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we run sudo cp merge fs serves the same name if you save a different name don't forget to change it and we want to save in the file location it's c system d system then we copy this file now we can enable our merge fs to do it we're gonna do sudo system tl tl enable merge fs service and we enable this service now we can start the service how we start it the same thing we start and we start Okay, uh, it's working. Yes, we can check if it's working. We can come here and ask the stats for it and it's running. If appear running, it's running. But okay, I'm not convinced that really work. TF slash H. And now I ha we have all our mounting points. It means that I have my temps, that will be my run memories. I have my folders, that is part one, two and three, what we have. And I have my merge FS. Look it. I have uh, nine gigabytes of merge FS. That will be additional for three, three, and three. If I have six, six, six would be 18. <laughs> if I have a different size, will be here the total size of all the merge. It means that I'm using 1% of my total capacity and this one's 188 megabytes. Let's see, I have 108 megabytes here, 3.9 and 3.9. Yes, seems right. It means that I have 188. Great. Now it's work. How it's gonna work? Let's open our share folder. In our share folder, I have my merge FS here and I have one file here. This file, this configuration of my files, if I come here in my folders data, have the same one. And here my file. It means that it's working. If I copy a second one, create a new word, I don't know, and I come here, the red save here. It means that this mounting point, theory, they don't exist. They are only a mounting point. So all the data will be divided on the rest of the files. This one, it's only the base for your pool. Then after this one, you can uh, install Docker, that I already showed in the other video. You can install Portrait, you can start to install a lot of Docker applications, and you can do whatever you want. Your mind is the creation. You can have a lot of different containers, and at least you can use something that it's top in your house without no any use. If you like this video, and I hope that you like, leave your like. If you don't like it, leave your dislike. Subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.